I get a lot of people asking if they can pick my brain. I don't know what that means. I'm just gonna give it to you right here and now. 10 tips that I have learned from teaching online and offline for over 10 years. Actually, I was a primary school teacher before I was a hoop teacher, but I have been teaching hooping and movement for the last 10 years. So here are my top 10 tips. Hey, my name is Deanne Love and I'm the creator of hooplovers.tv and also hooplovecoaching.com. 15 years ago, I picked up a hula hoop for the first time. I was 30 years old life-changing. I know it's hard to believe, but everything kind of got flipped upside down in the most wild, creative and amazing way. And I've been on this huge journey of teaching, sharing with as many humans as I possibly can on this planet, how to move with joy and freedom, but it's also challenge. And so ultimately we are dropping into these flow states. And I've learned a whole bunch of things the hard way, but I've learned some really cool lessons. And so here are 10 things that you might wanna know. Grab your journal. And while you're doing that, you're gonna be heading back here to this video, not going away anywhere. I would love to hear from you. If you are already teaching movement, if you're teaching hooping, if you're curious about it, let me know why. Tell me your why. Why do you do it? In the comments down below, why do you wanna share or why do you share movement, teaching, hooping, creativity? It's big. I'd love to hear from you. One of the biggest things that I have realized over this past decade of teaching is that you can teach hooping pretty much anywhere. You could teach movement anywhere. If you're a yoga teacher, you have more space and access than say a hula hoop teacher, but I have taught in the most diverse spaces, indoors, outdoors, online, upstairs, downstairs, club nights, all over the planet. So there is no place that you cannot teach hooping unless maybe it's too small for the hoops. <laughs> Where have you taught a hoop or movement class? I wanna hear in the comments. The second vital tip is that hooping or yoga, movement, whatever it is that you're sharing and teaching are two different skills. And just because you feel confident and empowered in one does not equate to you being prepared, confident and skilled in the other. And they both deserve equal attention and education and dedication. Hooping, teaching, two different skills. When they come together, magic. The third tip, be yourself. I know that's a really tricky, hard one. And sometimes oh, there's so much going on that we don't even know. We don't have that self-awareness. But if you can stay true to who you are and what you want to share and how you want to do it. And I know that is so challenging in this era of comparison and constantly watching everyone else and thinking that's how I should do it. If you can tap into your special source, and this is why, this is the first module of Hoop Love Coach Training, my teacher training for hoop teachers. It's all about your special source. Like you think we would just dive straight into understanding the mechanics and creating safe classes and all that comes later because if you don't know yourself and what it is that you offer and the solutions that you provide and how you're going to share and how you're going to sustain yourself, it's gonna be a really rocky road. And then also we're just not authentic and, and being who we truly are and being able to be open because we're wearing all of these masks. And I know it's a lot to unpack and we are humans, but if you can be yourself and if you can really understand your special source and your flavor and how you show up in this world and particularly as a teacher, creator and mover, that's where the magic's at. Another little side note, something that I often say is that confidence is simply courage on repeat. So little steps, little actions that feel really courageous in the moment, they build, they accumulate into this blossoming confidence as a teacher or whatever it is that your passion is, whatever it is that you are wanting to share or show up as. Confidence is simply courage on repeat. I am a big believer in structure meeting flow and this is the sweet spot and this is why I highly recommend creating a plan for everything. 
Your plan doesn't have to look like someone else's or be exactly the benchmarks of a business plan, but having a plan will mean that you have thought it through, you are prepared, and so that's going to lead to your confidence. That might be a lesson plan, knowing exactly what your warm-ups are, exactly what your tricks and skill learning is, exactly what your playlist is, how you're going to guide playtime, what embodiment practices you're going to share, the words, the vocabulary that you would like to use, the hoops that you're going to have, and then how you're going to bring people back together, what promotion you're going to share. If you have a map and you can do it however you like as creative beings, we often, I like to draw mine out and have it all there. However your brain, however your creativity, however your style works, your special source, remember, your planning is going to be such a beautiful, strong growing seed to plant. So having a plan will create a pathway, will give growth to whatever it is that you are sharing. As a teacher, there are certain superpowers that we really want to harness, to develop, to foster, to nourish. One of those is observation. Observation will be a superfood for you. If you can skill yourself up and become courageous at witnessing your students, being able to show up and observe them and give them supportive, nourishing feedback to help them grow, this will be one of your superpowers. It will allow you to break things down, to understand, and then be able to deliver more supportive teaching. One of those other superpowers though, are boundaries. We all, as teachers, as creatives, as hoopers, as movers, need to find ways to develop and understand and share our compassionate boundaries. As a people pleaser, this is very challenging because we want to give and give and give more and pour more and put more in and anything that you need, I'm here and what else can I offer and do you need anything? Compassionate boundaries for your sake and for your students and your community will also be a superpower. As a teacher, it's really important to know, to acknowledge, to understand your anchors. What grounds you? What allows you to find stability so that you can show up with energy? For me, there are a few things that I really hold on to as my anchors. The first one is structure. Remembering I said before the structure and the flow, that sweet spot, having a structure creates a container for, for whatever it is, whether that's my teaching, my promotion, my practice time. And when you create that container, then you create safety and you feel secure. And that's not just for you as a teacher, but it is essential for your students. A second anchor that I am always using because I am human and so are you, and it is breath, pranayama, the life force it is there and when we get overwhelmed and when we get overworked and when we have too much we can often forget to breathe a big tip in your next teaching practice or in the next time that you are fully engaged in whatever it is that you are sharing if you can recenter anchor and tap into the sensation of your breath then you will be in the present moment and you are likely to have a wow moment to just take a moment to step back to experience your breath and what is unfolding in front of you another anchor for me is music very important huge inspiration i have done other workshops or other um, YouTubes and breakdowns on the importance of crafting flowing playlists and how to do that saving time and energy music is an anchor it is an inspiration Another big anchor for me is the ebb and flow of energy and understanding how to sustain my energy, what is fueling me and what is draining me. Big anchors, what are yours? Tip number seven is to start small, but start now. I have a huge tendency to think of the biggest, grandest, most monstrous plan and then get overwhelmed. 
but there are many, many small steps, just like the small courageous steps leading to confidence, small action steps lead to bigger dreams or accomplishments or whatever it is that you are desiring or are your goals. So start small, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps a small group. Maybe you can do a few tutorials. Maybe your vision is to have a huge global membership teaching, sharing multiple teachers and that is perfect. But start small with what you have and start now. Tip number eight is that you will need support. We all need support. We are humans. We live in a collective. We need each other. And developing the skill of reaching out for help, finding yourself, creating and relating with like-minded creatives or other hoop teachers is going to be such a huge inspiration. I know that sometimes you can feel quite isolated and especially a lot of things are online now, but there is always support for you to reach out, to get connected and to get the help that you need and you deserve to make your way to those huge, big, wild, grand dreams. This is something that I was told as a young person, but I didn't quite understand it until I was much older. And that is that there is no destination. It is a continuous journey. And although I may have these goals or dreams or visions that I think once I get to that, what I have truly discovered is that once I get to that point, it is a continuous journey beyond that of connection, of creativity, of abundance. It's never ending and we never get there. <laughs> There's always something else to create or something else to share. My 10th tip and mm, one of the most interesting, challenging, rocky things that I have learned is that technology is an amazing support and it continues to give so much to our lives. And social media is a wild distraction. <laughs> it can also be a powerful connector and a beautiful platform for creativity as long as we maintain compassionate boundaries. <laughs> Continue to create without getting consumed. Take as many breaks as you need. You will not be forgotten. You are an important piece of this beautiful creative puzzle. Okay, so there you have 10 tips, ideas, lessons, learns. There are so many more. It was really challenging just to bring in 10. I would love to hear things that you have learned as a movement hoop teacher or things that you're hoping to learn, that you're curious about, that you're worried about, that you're stressed about, all of the things that go into taking courageous steps on the pathway to continuous creativity. Big hoop love from me to you. Mwah.